Chapter 14 In the last chapter, we described how Baba's word and grace cured many incurable diseases. Now, we shall describe how Baba blessed Mr. Ratanji Wadia and gave him an issue. The life of this saint is naturally sweet. His various doings, eating, walking and his natural sayings are also sweet. His life is bliss incarnated. Sain gave bliss to his devotees as a means of remembrance. He gave them various stories of duty and action, which ultimately led to true religion. His object may be that people should live happily in this world, but they should be ever cautious and achieve the object of their life via self-realization. We get human body as a result of merits in past births and it is worthwhile that with its aid, we should attain devotion and liberation in this life. So, we should never be lazy but always be on the alert to gain our goal of life. If you hear the Leelas of Sai daily, you will always see him. Day and night you will remember him in your mind. When you assimilate Sai in this way, your mind will lose its fickleness. And if you go into this manner, it will finally be merged in pure consciousness. Ratanji of Nanded. Now, let us come to the main story of this chapter. In Nanded, in the Nizam state, there lived a passive mill contractor and trader by name Ratanji Shapurji Vadia. He had amassed a large amount of money and had acquired fields and lands. He had cattle, horses and conveyance and was very prosperous. In all outward appearances, he looked very happy and contented, but inwardly he was not so. Providential dispassion is that no one in this world is completely happy and rich Ratanji was no exception of this. He was a liberal and a charitable person and also gave food and clothing to the poor and thus helped them in various ways. The people took him to be a very good and happy man, but Ratanji thought himself miserable as he had no issue, male or female, for a long time. Just as Kirtan without love or devotion, song without rhythmical accompaniments, Brahmin without the sacred thread, proficiency in all arts without common sense, pilgrimage without repentance and ornamentation without necklace, or fruitile and useless. So is a householder without an issue. Ratanji always brooded on this matter and said in his mind, Would we ever pleased to grant me a son? He thus looked morose and did not relish his food. Day and night he was enveloped with anxiety as to whether he would ever be blessed with a son. He had a great regard for Das Ganu Maharaj. He saw him and opened his heart before him. Das Ganu advised him to go to Shirdi, take Baba's darshan, fall at his feet and seek his blessing and pray for an issue. Ratanji liked the idea and decided to go to Shirdi. After some days, he went to Shirdi, took Baba's darshan and fell at his feet. Then, opening a basket, he took out a beautiful garland of flowers and placed it around Baba's neck and offered him a basket of fruits. With reverence, he then sat near Baba and prayed to him saying, Many persons who find themselves in difficult situations come to you and you relieve them immediately. Hearing this, I have anxiously sought your feet. Please do not disappoint me. Sai Baba then asked him for Dakshina of rupees 5, which Ratanji intended to give but added that he had already received rupees 314 from him and that he should only pay the balance. Hearing this, Ratanji was rather puzzled. He could not make out as to what Baba meant. That was the first time he thought that he had come to Shirdi and how was it that Baba said that he had earlier got Rs. 3.14.0 from him. He couldn't solve the riddle. But he sat at Baba's feet and gave the balance of the Dakshina asked for, explained to Baba fully as to why he came and sought his help and prayed that Baba should bless him with a son. Baba was moved and told him not to worry 
and that thence onward his bad days had ended he then gave him udi placed his hand on his head and blessed him saying that allah would satisfy his heart's desire then after taking baba's leave ratan ji returned to nander and told das ganu everything that took place at shirdi he said that everything went on well there that he got baba's darshan and blessing with prasad but there was one thing which he could not understand baba said to him that he had got rupees 3 14 before please explain as to what baba meant by this remark he said to das ganu i never went to shirdi before and how could i give him the sum to which baba referred to das ganu too it was a puzzle and he thought much over it for a long time some time afterwards it struck him that ratan ji had received some days ago a muhammadan sent by name mauli sahib in his house and had spent some money to for his reception this mauli sahib was a well known saint of nanded and worked as a potter when ratan ji decided to go to shirdi this mauli sahib turned up at ratan ji's house ratan ji knew him and loved him so he gave a small party in his honor das ganu got from ratan ji the memo of expenses of this reception and everybody was wonderstruck to see that the expenses amounted exactly to rupees 3 14 nothing more or nothing less they all came to know that baba was omniscient that though he lived in shirdi he knew what happened outside far away from shirdi in fact he knew the past present and future and could identify himself with anybody in this particular instance how could he know the reception given to molly sahib and the amount spent before unless he could identify himself with him and be one with him ratan ji was satisfied with this explanation and his faith in baba was confirmed and increased in due time he was blessed with a son and his joy knew no bounds it is said that he had in all a dozen issues out of which only four survived in a footnote towards the end of this chapter it is stated that baba told rao bahadur hari vinayak sathe after the death of his first wife to remarry that and he would get a son rb sathe married second time the first two issues by this second wife were daughters and he therefore felt very despondent but the third issue was a son baba's word did come true and he was satisfied dakshina now we shall close this chapter with a few points about dakshina it is a well known fact that baba always used to ask for dakshina from people who went to see him somebody may ask a question that if baba was a fakir and perfectly non attached why should he ask for dakshina and care for money we shall consider this question broadly now first for a long time baba did not take anything he stored burnt matches and filled his pocket with them he never asked anybody for anything whether he be a devotee or otherwise if anybody placed before him a paisa or two he purchased oil or tobacco he was fond of tobacco for he always smoked a bidi or chilim then some persons thought that they should not go to saints empty handed and therefore placed some copper coins before baba if a paisa was placed before him he used to pocket it if it is was a two paisa coin it was returned immediately then after baba's fame had spread far and wide people began to flock in numbers and baba began to ask darshana from them it is said in the shruti that puja of the gods is not complete unless a golden coin was offered if a coin was necessary in the puja of the gods why should it not be so in the puja of the saints also ultimately the shastras laid it down that when one goes to see god king saint or guru he should not go empty handed he should offer something preferably money in this connection we may notice the precepts recommended by the upanishads the brihadaranyak upanishad 
says that the Lord Prajapati advised the gods, men and demons by one letter, the. The gods understood this letter that they should practice dhamma, means self-control. The men thought or understood that they should practice dana, means charity. The demons understood that they should practice daya, means compassion. To men, charity or giving was recommended. The teacher in the Taitriya Upanishad exhorts his pupils to practice charity and other virtues. Regarding charity, he says, Give him faith or even without it, give with magnanimity, means liberally, give the modesty, awe and sympathy. In order to teach the devotees the lesson of charity and to remove their attachment to money and thus to purify their minds, Baba extracted Dakshina from them. But there was this peculiarity as Baba said that he had to give back hundred times more of what he received. There are many instances in which this has happened. To quote an instance, Mr. Ganpat Rao Bodas, the famous actor, says in his Marathi autobiography that on Baba's pressing him often for Dakshina, he emptied his money bag before him. The result of this was, as Mr. Boda says that, in later life, he never lacked money, as it came to him abundantly. There were also secondary meanings of Dakshina. In many cases in which Baba did not want any pecuniary amount, to quote two instances, first, Baba asked rupees 15 as Dakshina from Professor G. G. Narke, who replied that he did not have any money. Then Baba said, I know you have no money, but you are reading Yoga Vashisht. Give me Dakshina from that. Giving Dakshina in this case meant deriving lessons from the book and lodging them in the hut where Baba resides. Second, in the second case, Baba asked a certain lady to give rupees 6 as Dakshina. The lady felt pained as she had nothing to give. Then her husband explained to her that Baba wanted 6 inner enemies to be surrendered to him. Baba agreed with this explanation. It is to be noted that though Baba collected a lot of money by Dakshina, he would distribute the whole amount the same day and the next morning he would become a poor fakir as usual. When Baba took his Mahasamadhi, even after receiving thousands and thousands of rupees as Dakshina, for about 10 years, he had only a few rupees in his possession. In short, Baba's main object in taking Dakshina from his devotees was to teach them the lessons of renunciation and purification. Postscript Mr. B. V. Dev of Thana, retired Mamladdar and a great devotee of Baba, has written an article on this subject, Dakshina, in Sri Sai Lila's magazine, Volume 2, P. 6 to 26, in which he says as follows Baba did not ask Dakshina of all. If some gave Dakshina unasked, he sometimes accepted it and at other times refused it. He asked it of certain devotees only. He never demanded it from those devotees who thought in their minds that Baba should ask for it and then they should pay it. If anybody offered it against his wish, he never touched it and if he kept it there, he asked him to get it away. He asked for small or big amounts from devotees according to their wish, devotion and convenience. He asked it even of women and children. He never asked of all the rich for it, nor of all the poor. Baba never got angry with those of whom he asked Dakshina and who did not give it. If any Dakshina was sent through some friend who forgot to hand over the same to Baba, he reminded him of it and made him pay it. On some occasions, Baba used to return some amount from the amount tendered as Dakshina and ask the donor to guard it or keep it in his shrine for worship. This procedure benefited the donor or devotee immensely. If anybody offered more than that, the originally intended to give, he returned the extra amount. Sometimes he asked to some more Dakshina 
than what they originally intended to give and if they had no money ask them to beg or borrow from others of some he demanded dakshina 3 or more times a day out of the amount collected as dakshina baba spent very little for his own sake ways for buying chilim and fuel for his dhuni and all the rest he distributed as charity in the varying proportions to various persons all the paraphernalia of the shirdi sansthan was brought by various rich devotees at the instance and suggestions of radha krishna mai baba always used to get wild and scolded those who brought any costly and rich articles he said to mr nana sahib chandorkar that all his property consisted of one copin one stray piece of cloth one kafni and a tumrel and that all the people troubled him by bringing all these unnecessarily costly articles women and wealth are the two main obstacles in the way of our parmarth and baba had provided in shirdi two institutions viz dakshina and radha krishna mai for whenever they came to him he demanded dakshina from them and asked them to go to school if they stood these two tests well i e if they showed that they were free from attachment for women and wealth their progress in spirituality was rapid and assured by baba's grace and blessings mr dev has also quoted passages from the gita and upanishads and showed that charity given in a holy place or to a holy personage conduces to the donor's welfare what is more holy than shirdi and its presiding deity sai baba